Hello, bonjour, and welcome to Local First. I'm Candace Vetter, and today I'm speaking with Senator Mary Lou McFedrin, and she's going to talk to us about the Can't Buy My Silence Act that she has brought forward. Um, hello, Senator. Thanks for coming on the show. It's really a pleasure to be able to speak with you, Candace. Oh, thank you. So um, tell us what you, you brought forward the Can't Buy My Silence Act, and uh, what prompted you to do that? Actually, I've been working on a bill along this line for several years now. I've been in the Senate just over six years, and soon after I arrived, some of the staff at the Senate started coming to my office privately late at night um, to tell me what was going on and the fact that they really didn't feel that there were processes in place that were there to help them. And there have been very significant changes made at the Senate, but there's an issue here across the entire federal government and in Canada as a whole. What I can do as a senator is look at what possible legislative means there is to be able to stop the harm that is done by NDAs when they are used for situations where there have been experiences of just various kinds of discrimination on race, on the basis of, of sex, other characteristics where there's been harassment and, and um, discrimination or violence in the in the situation. So after, seriously, it's, it's been years of discussion, and I've had really excellent consultations with people that have stayed very focused on this issue, particularly in the non-governmental sector, and I'll just name in, in particular uh, Dr. Julie McFarlane of Can't Buy My Silence, and also Kathleen Finley, who writes extensively for the Hill Times. And I've been back and forth uh, over the years, and the bill is really designed to follow the money in the federal government and stop the flow of federal funds to be used for these kinds of non-disclosure agreements. Right. So... One of the things with uh, with non disclosure agreements that I have wondered about for a long time is when someone is paid to not speak and signed one of these agreements and there it's being used to cover up something that was illegal in the first place. For example, the Hockey Canada stuff. Uh, you know, like we're talking about sexual violence yeah. against people. So my understanding is that a contract is not a valid contract if it is for an illegal purpose anyway. So like with, with those with those ones, for instance, with those NDAs, like would the person signing them actually have to abide by them if it's not really a legal contract? Well, I think maybe the missing link to the logic that you've just presented is the finding that something has been illegal. In other words, there are allegations that something has happened, a form of discrimination, a form of abuse, a form of assault. But in many cases, these NDAs have been used to stop a process where there was yet to be a final conclusion as to whether or not the, the practice was illegal. So what they have done, the NDAs, in a way they have been designed by lawyers, recommended by lawyers to both sides in the situation as a way of protecting the reputation of an institution, an employer. We've mentioned Hockey Canada. We know from the hearings that are still going on in the House of Commons that we have many of the different national sports where athletes come forward and talked about maltreatment of various kinds, discrimination of various kinds. So it's not as simple as saying because someone says this happened, it happened, and therefore the contract is legal. There are many more arduous steps, and frankly, for many people, it's just too expensive a process to try and engage. Typically, you would need to engage with your own legal representation. So the the NDAs have, have served multiple purposes. They have served the purpose largely, though, of settling a complaint, usually before that complaint reaches the end of a, of a process. So, yes, your question 
about if you can't contract out of something that is criminal, that is correct in law, but what what you're missing is that all those intermediate steps to actually get to the place where there is a clear finding that indeed the circumstances occurred and indeed they are illegal. Right, and that's the hard part. Is Very much the hard and expensive part. Right, and so if this all goes through finally, what difference will that make? Well, first of all, it's a federal bill, mm-hmm. so it affects it affects federal entities, as I call them in the in the bill, entities, because this is not only about departments of government. It is not only about crown corporations, although they are captured by this. It also means that non-governmental entities like Hockey Canada become subject through a condition of their receiving any federal funding that they must report to whatever government official or department from whom they're receiving the money. They have to report if there are, if the money has been used or if they have used any non-disclosure agreements in any discrimination cases. And they have to report the amount of money spent for that. So, When I say follow the money, what I'm really talking about is going to the source of what makes it possible for these kinds of NDAs in cases of harassment, discrimination to be made and cutting off the federal funding that enables those kinds of agreements to be made. Right. So Clearly, you're Canada, where it hurts. You <laughs> well, it's stopping the process. Right. They're not making it possible. If the money's not there, then they're not going to hire their lawyers. They're not going to be able to proceed with this kind of settlement. Okay. And, and, you know, I think that it's really important for me to say that my bill would also cover NDAs past, present, and future. Oh, right. Great. Okay. So, so the silencing, the silencing, where there would be no capacity to use federal money to actually go after people if they were to speak out and, and break the silencing clause of an NDA. All right. So we're pretty much out of time. Is there anything you want to add before we sign off? Uh, just to say that I think it's very important that the, that the fact that the bill covers government entities and non-governmental entities receiving federal funding in a federal context. It's wonderful. Thanks so much for speaking with us today. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy person. Thank you, Candace. It's really great to have this interest. Okay. I'm Candace Vetter on Local First, and I've been speaking with Senator Mary Lou McFedrin about the Can't Buy My Silence Act. This is CGRO Radio, last on the dial and first for local news.